Hello students, I am Zinesh Vurpi. Uh, this is part two of parental care topic in ethology. Uh, in this, uh, this is a continuation of the parental care topic and uh, in this we will study some examples of parental care. Types of parental care. In the first session, uh, I mean in the previous session we studied uh, what is parental care and what is its significance etc. Here in this particular uh, session we are going to study some examples. Types of parental care. First let us see some uh, types. Maternal care. You can say uniparental care. Uh, it is a parental care where only one of the parent is involved in taking care of the young one either male or female if it is the female then it is called maternal care so maternal care is the case where the female parent is exclusively involved in taking care of the offspring and male is not at all involved right so in case of maternal care the female uh, you can say the mother is taking care of the young ones or the eggs, whatever it is. And uh, the male a parent is not at all involved in taking care of the young ones. But uh, in the nature, normally you don't find the case uh, where uh, only paternal care is there. Only the father taking care of the young ones and mother is not at all involved. Therefore, uh, we are not including paternal care as an example here. Then we have biparental care. Biparental care is a condition where both male and female parents are involved in taking care of the young ones. So uh, there are many cases where both the parents, mother and father, right, the male parent and female parent both are involved. Maybe uh, they will uh, share the same work or they will share the different work. Like in some cases you will find the mother protecting the egg or protecting the young ones and uh, the father go and fetch the food or the father will protect against the predators and mother will uh, protect uh, at the same place. So like this, they may have different roles or they may uh, have the same role and they may exchange the roles, whatever it is, right? Both the parents are involved in case of biparental care. Many examples are there. Then we have another very interesting type of care called alloparental care. Alloparenting uh, is also referred as alloparental care. I mean alloparenting is also referred as alloparental care. It is a term used to classify any form of parental care provided by an individual towards a non-descendant young. Non-descendant refers to any young who is not the direct genetic offspring of the individual. So here it is a case, alloparenting is a, a type of parental care where one individual is taking care of the young one which is not its own offspring. It is not its direct genetic offspring. Uh, so these are the cases, even though it is not its own offspring but remember it is genetically related right so it is genetically related you take the example one best example of allo parenting is honeybees right in honeybees what happens queen is the one which is producing the eggs all the offsprings of the colony all the members of the colony are offsprings of the queen only now what happens when the queen produces the eggs. The eggs are uh, taken care by the worker honeybees, right? It is the worker honeybees who are protecting the eggs, who are taking care of the larvae, who are bringing food to the larvae and who are bringing food to the young honeybees like this, right? So the worker honeybees who are taking care of the eggs or larvae of the queen you can consider them as allo parents because they are not their own offspring. They are, they are the offsprings of queen. Then who is the queen? Queen is the mother of this allo parent, right? So indirectly, the worker honeybee is taking care of their siblings because 
they share genetic material right uh, genetically they are related since they are like brothers uh, i mean the brothers or sisters right so they are taking care of their own brothers or sisters uh, and they share 50 percent of genes right so even though they are not their own offspring they share same amount of genes you know this is a wonderful concept allo parenting can be explained why even though it is not their own offspring why they are taking care the answer is very simple the parent is taking care of the offspring for fitness we already discussed what is fitness i don't want to repeat it what is the genetic relation between the offspring and parent the offspring shares 50 percent of the genes of each parent right so you think of a father and the offspring so they share 50 percent of genes mother and the offspring they also share 50 percent of the genes so they are genetically related and the genetic relationship is 50 percent whereas the siblings you think of the worker honeybee which is taking care of their own siblings even though it is not their offspring but the genetic sharing is same so the fitness will be same right if it is going to produce its own offspring or it is going to take care of the brother or sister who is going to produce later so the genetic fitness remains same so that is how it can be explained i told you it has nothing to do with animal behavior right it has something to do with evolution but uh, since uh, uh, there uh, you know there is a saying in biology like each and everything in the biology must be seen in the light of evolution so i am relating this particular behavior to the evolution even though it is not necessary uh, for examination point of view then we have examples like of parental care by parental care in insects some typical examples only i am taking because thousands of examples are there only few uh, let us study Biparental care in insects is reported in three orders, Blattoidea, Coleoptera, and Hymenoptera. Most members in these orders make nests underground or in wood burrows and prepare food for egg one in nest before OE position is finished. Nest guarding by males against other males is reported in most species. Uh, in case of insects, especially in Hymenopterans, you can see the nests uh, built by the Hymenopterans. There are wasps here, the two type of wasps. So paper wasps building their nest and uh, another wasp you can see on the right side, which is uh, building the mud nest, the nest which is built with the clay, I mean the mud. So here, as it is told in this point they make the nest that nest building itself is a part of parental behavior then what they do is they are going to lay the eggs in the nest and uh, they do one thing so i am going to explain that with this next slide i don't know how many of you seen uh, this particular uh, event right it is very common if you are very observative you would have seen this happening around you sometimes you observe suppose normally it happens around your houses the wasps building nest mud nest right you don't worry about the species name and other things you know what are wasps and you will see a wasp building the mud nest uh, maybe inside your house or uh, near the window or near the door or outside your house just don't disturb it and start observing what happens the mother she will bring right the mud from somewhere uh, and uh, the nest will be constructed and once the nest is ready you have to be very observative she will bring a larvae of an insect the larva which is alive but which is paralyzed you remember this is a very uh, special behavior which is wonderful right the mother wasp she brings 
a live larva of another insect live means she has injected her poison so that it is paralyzed that means it is not dead but it will not move what she will do is she will take that larva she will put it into uh, put it into the nest and she will lay the eggs either in the nest or on the larva remember there is a paralyzed larva she puts she is going to lay the fertilized eggs on the larva then she is going to seal off the nest her job is done so what she has done she has ensured protection by constructing the nest and uh, she has ready food for the young ones which hatch out of the egg and the food which is fresh because it is a live uh, larva what happens inside is once the eggs hatch right and uh, the larva of the wasp will come out and their mother has put a fresh meal for them right they will start feeding on the larva of some other insect which her mother, their mother has put so this you can say uh, is one very interesting example of parental care the mother protecting the eggs and their hatched larva by constructing nest and providing food in advance right bringing food is different but she has put the food already so this is one example so i advise you to observe it next time whenever you find a wasp constructing nest nearby you you just observe it it's wonderful to observe this behavior then parental care in fishes some example most of the fish species release their gametes into water and doesn't care about the eggs or offspring this is what i told you in the first session maximum number of fishes they release their gametes eggs and sperms into the water and they forget but many species there are so many uh, species of fish which are uh, which exhibit parental care behavior some of the parental care behavior uh, include spreading egg over aquatic plants or sticky coverings so uh, it may be very simple or very very primitive like uh, taking care of the eggs so the fishes will uh, make sure that the eggs are placed on a safe place in a safe place like uh, on the aquatic plants or on the sticky coverings so that they will not uh, get distributed in the water and they will be eaten by the predators and normally they forget so this is a primitive type this is the most simplest type of parental care you will find in fishes right so finding suitable place to lay the eggs of course even though it appears to be very simple but since it has selected a place where the eggs are safe the so the hatching rate and survival of the fish becomes more so indirectly it is making sure that its offspring survive a more number of its offspring survive right uh, you find this behavior in aesox lucius and carps like cyprinus carpio carasius atatus etc then one another interesting behavior you find in fishes is nest building there are so many different types of nests normally the fish are going to build their nest uh, in the bottom of river uh, in the bottom of the water body most of the time it is nothing but they will clear off and they will make a uh, one uh, uh, place of where the egg can be laid right a concave a concavity they simply dug a hole right they are going to dig a hole where the eggs can be laid and another interesting feature is nest building behavior is part of the courtship courtship behavior in uh, fishes courtship uh, it is not covered in our uh, syllabus here courtship behavior is not included but i advise the students to uh, search information on your own right regarding courtship behavior right it is a interesting topic in fishes nest building is part of courtship behavior the male is going to build the best uh, nest and it will try to attract the female to lay her eggs right 
it's so interesting in some fishes what happens the male will build a nest and then he will invite the female the female will come and inspect and it will select the best nest to lay her eggs remember normally there is no copulation the fertilization is external the female will come she will lay her eggs and once the eggs are released normally the male will chase away the female right because its job is done right and he will release his sperms on the eggs the male will release uh, its sperms on the eggs and the eggs will get fertilized of course uh, in some cases the male and female will come back and they will take care of the uh, eggs until they hatch or only the male will take care of the eggs until they hatch or the male will simply release the sperms and move away all these things happen so there are so many variations in the behavior of fishes depending upon the uh, species but you can say nest building behavior is one type of parental care you find in fishes then we have some other examples like coiling round the eggs uh, here you can see this is the butterfish there is a fish called butterfish which coils uh, around the eggs the female is going to coil around the eggs uh, because of the gluey substance the eggs remain attached to the body and she will remain coiled until the eggs are going to hatch so this is one type of parental care then egg brooding in mouth and intestine so tilapia fish is very famous so the fish is going to carry the egg ones right the newly hatched fishes are carried in the mouth that is very interesting right so it carries its egg one in the mouth now you may wonder how it is going to eat its own food is it going to eat its own uh, offsprings no when it is going to eat its own food it will open its mouth the egg ones will come out then it will have its uh, prey and again the young ones will enter into its mouth so it is going to take care of the young ones until they become capable of surviving on their own so this is uh, one type of parental care you find in fishes then brood pouches which is a very famous example you see this is a seahorse right seahorse is a bony fish uh, you know and uh, male seahorse carrying fertilized eggs in brood pouch interestingly it is the male uh, which carries the egg ones in its brood pouch like kangaroo you know uh, kangaroos have brood pouches the seahorse is also having a brood pouch and brood pouch is found only in male and it's going to carry uh, those who do not understand the process of reproduction uh, you know uh, falsely they say it is the male which becomes pregnant it's not like that uh, because it is not happening inside the body it is only the brood pouch the female she will uh, lay she will copulation takes place you just imagine the copulation after the copulation uh, the fertilized eggs are going to be kept in the brood pouch you please check on i just got confused whether the fertilization uh, fertilization is external or internal right you find out on your own but what happens is the fertilized eggs are kept in the brood pouch and uh, the young ones are going to come out of the brood of the uh, male and uh, when they come out in large number you know it appears as if the male is giving birth to the young ones that's why falsely it is considered as the male getting pregnant which is not the case then we have vivi parity you know viviparous nature is found only in mammals so what is viviparity uh, viviparity giving birth to the young ones it is not viviparity actually it is ovo viviparity which is found in cartilage fishes like scoliodon sharks uh, you can say it is most comparatively uh, advanced type of parental care uh, copulation takes place there is internal fertilization the fertilization occurs inside the body of the female egg is released but egg will egg will not come out of the body and uh, the egg will develop all right the embryonic development occurs inside the body 
and it will hatch inside the body only. You can say it is like uterus. But remember, there is no uh, histological connection between the mother and the young one like mammal. Uh, placenta is not there, right? The egg is simply uh, uh, is uh, inside the body, right? And uh, the egg hatches inside the body only and the young one will come out, right? It's like giving birth to the young ones only. So this is how you can say the eggs are protected to their maximum extent by keeping them inside the body. So this you can call it as VV parity or to be uh, correct, it is OO VV parity, which is found in cartilage fishes. The best example is Coleodon, the shark, which we normally study uh, in the college's uh, syllabus. Other examples like parental care in amphibians. The parental care behavior is well developed in this group. I mean, I'm talking about the frogs, toads, <clears throat> and salamanders. Methods of parental care generally fall under two broad categories. One is protection by constructing nests. You know, amphibians also construct nests, which are very simple, of course, nurseries or shelters, and direct caring by the parents. In apodans and salamanders, parental care consists only of attendance of the eggs, mostly by the female. Whereas in anurans, eggs are usually guarded by the male, and parental care involves transportation of eggs and uh, taking care of larvae also. Here in this picture, uh, I, I advise the students to read a textbook, right, of, I think you already studied it in your first year, right, while studying the chordates in amphibia. So you, you refer any textbook of chordates or vertebrates, in the amphibian chapter, in the amphibian part, you will find a chapter called Parental Care in Amphibians. There you will find in detail, right, detailed examples. You can see here Ichthyopis. This is a very famous example. Ichthyopis uh, coiling itself around the eggs, then uh, the egg ones being carried on the body, right. This is the uh, amphibia. Uh, I mean, uh, Eurodella, which is carrying eggs around its neck. This is carrying the eggs around its legs, right? And eggs which are inserted in the skin of the back. There are so many examples, right? There is one example, H, right? Uh, where the eggs are carried in the vocal sac of the Rhinoderma darwini. That is the name of the frog. Like this, there are many examples where in amphibia, you can see the parental care uh, in the form of protecting the egg, egg, I mean protecting the eggs especially and carrying the eggs wherever they go because if they lay the eggs in one place and go away from that, they will be uh, eaten by the predator. So one type of parental care is to carry the eggs with them so that they are protected from the predators. All right. Then parental care in birds, it is very uh, evolved in case of birds. All birds are egg-laying, you know that. The parental care includes building nests in birds. I, I want to be very simple because all of you know this behavior. I am just uh, giving the example here. The parental care in birds includes nest building, you know, different birds building different types of nests, right? Crow builds one type of nest, weaver bird builds another type of nest, like this. Where the eggs are laid and protected from predators. Incubation of eggs for hatching. So this is another behavior where, you know, uh, the eggs are going to, I mean, the embryo are going to develop in higher temperature. So that high temperature is provided by the uh, individuals, right? The birds are going to sit on the eggs so that the embryonic development occurs inside the uh, egg. That is called incubation. So incubation is necessary for hatching of the eggs. So that also can be considered as parental care. Bringing food to the newborn, that is one behavior you find in the observing the birds. Taking them along to teach the behavior of collecting food, avoiding enemies, etc. Once they hatch out, 
you know almost all birds you have seen carrying or taking uh, the young ones with them and uh, they have different objectives here mm -hmm. so by taking the young ones with them they are protecting their young ones from the predators and they are teaching the young ones how to catch the food how to avoid enemies etc etc here are some photographs where you can see the birds feeding their young ones protecting their young ones right so uh, most of the cases even penguins right this is the photograph where you can see the young ones are kept at the center and adults are surrounding it why it is like that i hope if you know the place where the penguins live you will understand uh, this picture they live in a very cold climatic condition they live in the polar areas where the temperature is minus 60 100 like uh, 60 uh, 40 like that minus 60 minus 40 and uh, this is called huddling right so all the adults make a circle and young ones are kept at the center so that these young ones are protected from the cold uh, wind right so like this as i told you parental care is such a topic where hundreds of examples will come and we have a limitation of time i am already dragging this topic too much right i don't want to drag it too much and bore you but <laughs> I cannot skip the parental care in birds by giving this beautiful example of Malabar Pied Harmwell. You know, uh, we have to be very proud because this uh, magnificent bird, very beautiful bird is uh, found in Karnataka, right? You know, Dandeli area is uh, declared as a uh, protected area for hornbills. Right, hornbills are found in that Dandeli area of Western Ghat. This is a very huge sized body. I need almost half an hour to talk about this single bird only, its behavior, parental care behavior and other things. But I will mention only two things. Uh, the female will lay the egg uh, in uh, the wood, uh, you know, cavity found in the tree it will select a large tree uh, where there is a cavity and it will lay the eggs the female will get inside and she will uh, cover it with the mud it is sealed so it is sealed in such a way that only the beak will come out and remember once it is inside that uh, wooden cavity or the hollow uh, hollow place of the tree it is going to shed its own feathers it becomes helpless right it cannot fly it is taking care uh, by putting itself uh, to the danger what the male will do male will go and search for the food it will fetch food for the female and it will fetch food for the young one also after its birth now its food mainly includes uh, certain varieties of fruits right and uh, it will that is the beautiful thing right that is a wonderful thing the male will travel hundreds of kilometers per day to bring these fruits you can see in the picture the bird is carrying one fruit right so just to bring few fruits it will travel hundreds of kilometers per day right in a single day it will go 100 kilometer distance and it will come back you just imagine the time and energy this bird is spending to take care of their young ones so that is uh, really uh, wonderful right so the bird uh, which has its nest in dandeli right you will find the male flying up to Kumta or Hwannavar in search of these uh, fruits. So just imagine what happens if you cut the trees of those particular fruits, right? You just think about that. Okay, it has nothing to do with our topic. I just gave you an example because uh, you search on your own about this beautiful bird and very wonderful bird which uh, is a characteristic or 
symbolic bird of Karnataka. That's why we have to be very proud that we, we have this bird in our state. Then parental care in mammals, it's of highest nature. The behavior shows maximum complexity in this group. They are viviparous. You know, all mammals give birth to the young ones, right? So the embryo grows inside the mother's womb, increasing the survival to its maximum, right? And the embryo grows in the uterus of the female until born. Different groups of animals show various kinds of parental care behavior. Commonly, it includes protecting young ones from the enemies, providing shelter, providing food, teaching them the hunting skills, etc., etc. So, I don't want to uh, take it too long because, uh, as I already mentioned, you know, kangaroo uh, uh, taking care of its young one by keeping it in its uh, marsupial pouch then uh, this bear which is protecting its young one right elephants taking care of its young one protecting its young ones you have seen the tigers and lions uh, which teach the young ones how to hunt so all these are examples of the behavior in the mammals and as i told you humans also belong to the hum uh, humans also belong to the mammalian group and uh, parental care is at its peak in this group of mammals. In humans, we find the highest level of parental care. Uh, that's about this last session of the ethology paper, where we studied the parental care behavior examples. Right? That completes the study of uh, parental care topic in particular and the ethology paper in general. Thank you.